Welcome back to episode 4 on authoritative multiplayer for our tic-tac-toe game. Authoritative multiplayer means that the server gets to control all of the player's state and game logic, while PhaserJS will just simply display the instructions and the camera will give it. Let's take a look a little bit more at our backend server in the camera. All of our game logic lives in this file, the match handler. There are three different languages we can use to develop our game server in the camera. We can use Golang, Lua, and TypeScript. For our tic-tac-toe game, we're going to be going over the TypeScript version of our backend server. So let's take a closer look at how exactly our game server works. Traditionally, in multiplayer games, there is a dedicated server which handles all of the game logic. Once the game is ended, the server will put everybody back to the server lobby and the dedicated server would get destroyed. The camera, however, does things a little bit differently. It uses a match handler template instead. What this means is that you can have as many different game modes running on only one Nakama instance. You can have the match handler template for our XOXO game, and you can also have a match handler template running for an entirely different game, such as a first person shooter. The big benefit of this is, is that you can have as many as hundreds of game modes only in one Nakama instance. The camera can then also dedicate resources depending on the game mode needs. A match handler template comes with six key functions. We have the match init function, which gets executed when a new match gets started. Here we can define our state and also our game settings. We have the match join attempt function, which gets called when someone wants to join our match. Here, for instance, we can validate if a player can join a match and then allow or disallow them from continuing. We have the match join function, which gets executed whenever a player actually joins our game. We have the match leave function, which gets executed when a player leaves our game. And finally, we have our match loop and match terminate functions. The match loop function gets executed every single tick. This is where we'll be handling all of the incoming data from our players and also broadcasting that data back to our players. For instance, we'll be calculating the player's positions, the player state, and all of the game logic will be in this function. The tick rate of a match means how fast the camera will be executing this function every second. Meaning if you have a tick rate of 30, this function will get executed 30 times per second. The higher the tick rate, the faster the server can receive incoming data and also broadcast data back to every single player. The camera supports tick rates to up to 60 per second. But for our tic-tac-toe game, we don't need the server to be running extremely fast. So a tick rate of just five will do for now. Another aspect of authoritative multiplayer is we can add in game labels to our matches. You can think of this as different game modes, perhaps, that define different features in that game. An example label for a first person shooter would perhaps be a team deathmatch label or a capture the flag label. This is very useful when it comes to matchmaking and finding a game for a place to play with. Since then we can just filter out all of the games that are either team deathmatch or capture the flag. The camera also provides horizontal scaling for its cloud users. This combined with the match terminate function allows us to have a really powerful toolbox when it comes to defining what happens when our game or match ends. Here's Andre Mihu, CTO of Horror Clouds, to talk a little bit more about how horizontal scaling works and how we can incorporate that in our match terminate function. Hi, so I'm Andre. I am co-founder and CTO of Horror Labs. My day-to-day -day role is both as sort of technical coordinator chief engineer and one of the core engineers of the Nakama um, server platform. Um, the match terminate function um, on match handlers is called by the server itself when it's received a termination signal. So the infrastructure controller or um, you as the operator have determined the server must shut down. Um, match terminate is called at that point on any authoritative matches that are running. And it's a signal intended to give the match a set amount of time to finish any ongoing work. This is so players don't just simply lose connection to the server when it shuts down and um, it just appears as radio silence. So at that point, the match can notify players. Maybe you will let them finish their current round of play or uh, you kick them out immediately. You can move them to another server. Um, if you're in a cluster, you can actually create matches from within that match, create matches on another node and instruct the clients to join that match. Um, that can also include shifting over any state so the players can simply resume playing where they left off. 
Thanks, Andre. If you have any more questions or queries on how horizontal scaling works, check out the links in the descriptions to guide you in the right place. Let's actually start sending data from our phaser.js client to the Nakama backend server. First, we need to actually connect to a match. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to be using the find match RPC function, which returns the next available match for our players to join. But don't worry though, we're going to go into detail on how matchmaking works in the next video. Once we're connected to the match, we can start receiving and also sending match data to Nakama. We'll create a function called make move, which will call every single time our player wants to click on one of the grids. And we'll use the socket we created in the last episode to send our game data. The socket contains a method called send match state, which we can give it the match ID, the opcode, and also the data we want to send to the server. The opcode is a numeric value that represents a task to be done. In our case, we have five opcodes. The opcode one means that the game has started. Opcode two means that we need to update the player state on the front end. Opcode three means the game has finished. Opcode four means a player has made a move and we want to send that to the server. And opcode five means there's something wrong and we have rejected that move from the player. These are really useful when it comes to defining certain actions we want to perform on the backend server and also on our front end in phaser.js. Now these opcodes are custom and you can make them entirely for your game and your specific needs. So in our make move function, we want to use the opcode of four as we are pushing data to Nakama to tell it that a player is moving and clicking a square on our grid. We'll create an object that has a position data in it and we'll send it off to Nakama. The camera will receive this request in the match loop function. We'll perform some checks to see if the player can actually make this move, if they've won or lost by making this move, and it'll update the game state if the player move is valid. Then it will broadcast the new state of the match to all of the connected players in the game. Then phaser.js will receive this incoming data and update the broad from the new data given. That means we need some sort of function in phaser.js to listen to incoming data Luckily for us, the socket has a onMatchData method, which does exactly what we need it to do. Every time the camera broadcasts a message, the onMatchData function will get called with that request data. In that request data, we also have an opcode for phaser.js to listen to. Like we said before, we can now distinguish which task we should do depending on the opcode. So if the opcode is two, that means we need to update the state of our board, meaning we'll call these functions to do that. If for instance the opcode is 3, then we know the game has ended and we'll do these functions instead. And at this point I should also say that all of the source code is available on GitHub and links are down below in the description. Let's take a closer look at our update board function. This function loops through the data that the camera gives us whenever we need to update the state of the game. We receive a board variable which is the current state of our tic-tac-toe board. If the value is one, that means player one has made a move on that index. If the value is two, that means player two has made a position on that index. With this, we can loop through the array and put an X or a zero, depending if it's player one or if it's player two. So now we can open up an incognito tab and test our integration. If we go to our local host, we can click play, and we should be able to play tic-tac-toe by ourselves on our two clients. So that does it for this episode on Authority Multiplayer. Next episode is all about matchmaking and how the camera works when it comes to finding other players to play with and finding our game servers to connect to. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.